Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we are at the American Association for Thoracic Surgery Conference in Los Angeles. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Sam Balke, who's the Director of Robotic Cardiac Surgery at University of Chicago Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Sam, it is great to see you again. Good to see you, Adam. Good y to see you. Yes, Sam, I'm hoping you can help expand our education and all the patients in our community specific to not just valvular disease, but coronary artery disease. I get lots of questions from patients. They are experiencing both of these at the same time. Can you talk about, is this common for patients? And if so, what might be considerations in terms of symptoms and risks? Yeah, no, great question, Adam. And uh, we get that question a lot from our patients as well. So uh, the majority of patients that present with coronary artery disease usually don't have an associated or concomitant valvular problem as well. Uh, but many do. It's not an uncommon situation. Um, many of them get diagnosed while undergoing the preoperative workup for their valve therapy. So say somebody comes in with a severe aortic stenosis um, and they are uh, embarking on having an operation for their aortic valve, uh, they will get a workup which includes a coronary angiogram. And sometimes that coronary angiogram will show that they have a blockage in one or more of the coronary arteries. And traditionally, that has triggered uh, a combined valve coronary operation, which if it's the aortic valve, usually entails an aortic valve replacement and coronary bypass. If it's a mitral valve, it can be a, a mitral valve repair and or replacement uh, and a coronary bypass procedure. Um, so that's what the traditional approach has been. And then there are some patients who come in uh, symptomatic from both conditions um, or vice versa where they come in symptomatic from their coronary disease and it is found at the time of their uh, intraoperative echo that they also happen to have a leaky mitral valve or an aortic valve that is more than a significant amount of, uh, of, of stenosis that has not been diagnosed on its own merit. And the conversations about, okay, if you're already in the operating room operating on somebody's coronaries and they have moderate aortic stenosis, do you replace that aortic valve or not? Uh, if they have a moderately leaky valve, do you do something with the valve? And there's a, a lot of conversation around that. And so for patients who have been told that they may need treatment for both their valve disease and coronary artery disease, how are you treating patients at University of Chicago Medicine? That's a great question. Um, so we obviously have adopted the uh, heart team concept and uh, we have uh, meetings uh, at least once a week about all the patients that present for their cardiac care. And we try to customize the therapy um, not only to the patient, but also to the lesion, if you will. And when I say lesion, I'm really talking about the site of the blockage of the coronary artery. So if they have a very tight blockage in um, uh, the main artery, the left anterior descending, uh, which is in a tight situation and it's not amenable to a stent, uh, those patients can be treated by doing a completely endoscopic robotic operation with a bypass graft to their LED. Now, what if they also have an aortic stenosis? Well, are they old enough to be a candidate for a TAVR? And can we do a combined robotic TCAB and TAVR? Or say, for example, they have a blockage in a less important blood vessel, and they have a degenerative mitral valve with a flail P2, and we know that the best option for that is surgery. And in my mind, the best option for that is robotic surgery for the mitral valve. And so what we would do in that case is we would also leverage our hybrid concepts and treat the mitral valve with the gold standard, which is mitral valve repair, uh, and in this case robotic, and then maybe do a PCI to that obtuse marginal branch number two that is significantly less important than an LAD. And so we look at the patient, their frailty, their obvious their age, their risk factors, and we look at all the things that we have to offer in our, in our toolbox uh, and try to do what is best for them. Um, and a lot of our patients, as you know, University of Chicago, we're very well known for our robotic program. And the majority of patients that come to my practice are looking for a sternal sparing operation or procedure. And so we're look, they're, they're coming to me saying, okay, I have this and this, can you still keep my sternum intact? And I'm a big believer that, uh, that keeping the sternum intact is a priority. It may not be the highest priority in every patient, but it is a priority. It's fascinating. You are tailoring care 
Yep. Not just for every patient, but you're leveraging all of the resources and assets at the University of Chicago to give the best procedure to that patient at the right time. Thinking about their lifetime management of valvular disease and coronary artery disease, I got to ask you, I'm sure patients are wondering, giving all these possibilities, what are the outcomes for patients? How do they do after these variable procedures? Yeah, no, that, that's, uh, that's, that's exactly what we're doing, exactly what you said. And, and obviously looking at the outcomes is extremely important. I think that um, we haven't been doing it long enough to have long-term outcomes, but our, we, we have long-term outcomes on the isolated procedures separately. So for example, if we're doing a TCAB and a TAVR, the TCAB-TAVR combo, um, we know the long-term outcomes of a TAVR in the appropriate patients are great. We know the long-term outcomes of a TCAB isolated in our hands, we've been doing it for 15 years, are also great. So there's no reason why those two things together should not also be great. Mitral valve repair, we've been doing it robotically for 12, 15 years. Um, uh, and, and we know the results of that. And so when we combine that with a PCI to a non-LAD target, we know that those outcomes um, uh, separately are fine, and then when you combine them, they should also be fine. Wow, well, Dr. Bauke, on behalf of all the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, all the patients all over the world, thanks to your personal efforts and the efforts of your team at University of Chicago Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Can't thank you enough for being here today and sharing all Absolutely. these great insights with us. Thank you very much, Adam, and, and congratulations on your work. I think you're doing very important work. Uh, our patients benefit daily from going onto your website reading about all the stories of the patients that they see there, and I always highly recommend it to them. Oh, thank you so much. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen, or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.